John here. Just wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about my Felton Even A1, of course. You know, it really is my favorite knife. And uh, I got a few questions actually about how you would sharpen a knife. And I figured what better way than show you guys how to sharpen it using the recommended Felkneven DC3 stone. So let me just go ahead and pull out my knife. This knife is no safe queen for me. It is my favorite knife, but I've definitely been using the heck out of it. And you can tell from when I got it new to where I have it now. And so yeah, there's definitely been getting some use on there. So initial sharpness right now is pretty good. And that was actually using my DC. And so let's go ahead and pull this DC3 out. So, yikes. You know, this thing did set me back a good 22, what, 20 bucks. The glues definitely come apart on there. You know, I don't mind that too much. This guy is just basically destroyed. I actually, I was on a wildfire not too long ago and I used it to sharpen up a lot of different tools I probably shouldn't have, like axes and and grubbing tools and things like that and so my diamond still is basically shot. Uh, this guy however still works great and uh, I like it a lot. I could still kind of use my diamond stone. We can see that reflection right there is actually some burnishing, some steel build up. So I can actually use my diamond stone to remove some of that stuff on there so more cutting surface is exposed. But let's go ahead and show you guys how to do this. So. Let's go ahead and damage the edge. I'm just gonna do a few pulls directly on there. Try to cut my stone in half. Let's see how it cuts now. Oh geez. Oh, this actually kind of breaks my heart to do. I, sorry baby. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give it a try. Again, I'm probably gonna use some water here. I like using water with this stuff because it really does help remove some of that swarf material. So I like to bring also the stone to the knife. So let me get a little closer here. And so I don't actually lay it flat on the knife. I kind of hold it at the desired angle for whatever I'm going to be cutting. So I start by grinding a convex edge on here at any desired angle. Okay, if I'm going to be doing some fine work with my knife, I can pull it back for sure. If, for instance, I like digging holes with my uh, felt even, I'd probably hold it at this angle. Okay, I'm not going to dig holes with my knife. I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. So, because I can use my knife really good, I can definitely benefit from having a much sharper, more shallower angle. And so on the felt even site, they actually recommended doing like figure eights or something like that on there. I just do these swirls. So the convex edges and all that stuff, it's really easy to do. Just think of it so like sharpening an axe. If you guys have ever sharpened an axe in fire camp or if you're just used to sharpening axes with those little circular stones, same thing. So after you get this convex edge, you would then blend it into the bevel. bevel. Ah, can't even talk by steepening it like so. And that's how you blend it in there so it just looks like it's one continuous grind just like you would do for an axe. So theoretically I would do this until I pop a burr. I'm lazy. I'm not going to geek out on this in front of you guys for like 30 minutes or so on and so forth. Moving up through all the different grits etc. So I'm going to try to cut corners and let's see if it goes go ahead and uh, if it works or if it doesn't work. I'm going to go ahead and try to feel for a burr. That's ideal. I'm not feeling a big one. Maybe a slight one right here. When you're first getting started, it is definitely better to get a bigger burr. But you know the thing is, if you make your burr too big, it is definitely can be really, really difficult to get rid of. So now, to get rid of any burrs I can't see, I'm just going to go ahead and do some light strokes on here like so. This is with the diamond plate. Feel for anything, feels like it got removed. And then I'll do the same thing to this side here. Just hold those angles. Sorry you guys aren't really getting a good view of this. 
I know I look like the freaking crypt keeper with my hand all up like this. It looks pretty girly. But I found this is the best way to field sharpen your felt and even back to what it was when I started the video. But let me go ahead and just put my money where my mouth is and just show you guys. Yeah, I really haven't been making a ton of videos. I've been really busy with work. I've been working two jobs right now. I've got a horrible knife addiction. <laughs> just like the rest of you knife geeks out there. See what we got. Sometimes I'll go ahead and do some strokes like this. It also just helps kind of refine the scratches. Alright, and again, back on this side. Go ahead and remove anything that developed that I can't see. And when you're feeling for a burr, it should feel like a lip of metal. It should be catching your finger right on there, okay? That's ideal. When you get better, you can definitely make a smaller and smaller burr, you know. But that's the bomb-proof way to get something incredibly sharp. So now, let's go ahead and do some honing strokes on each side. And let's see what I have to work with to refine on the brown. So this is what I had here. I wasn't cutting. Now I'm cutting paper, okay? 